All right, Shalom, Shalom, Kwame Inshallah. Just want to give all praises, glory, and honor to the Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Raka HaKadash, and the belong to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone of GMS that rule well and do teach well and have taught me this truth. To you, I say Shalom, Shalom unto the hopeful elect. All right, so uh, what is the read and what is the temple of the Most High? That's what we're going to go into today, and we're going to start at Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. All right, so that's what we're going to be taking a look at. So we're going to start off by reading Revelation chapter 11, verse 1, and it says here, And there was given me a reed, like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of the Most High, and the altar, and them that worship therein. Beautiful. So uh, you should know by now, especially if you've been in this truth for a while, um, the reed is the Bible. And the Bible is a measuring stick. And why is that? Because the Bible has all the laws, statutes, and commandments in it. And it is used for correction. And who is it correcting? It's correcting the Israelites, which is the temple. So the temple is not dealing with a physical a, a physical building or a physical structure. It's really it really starts with the people. Now who are the Lord's people? The Israelites. Now, when you go into uh, Amos uh, 3 and 2, that's who the Lord is dealing with, right? So it says here, Amos, I'll start at verse uh, 1. Amos chapter 3, verse 1, hear this word that Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Yahshua, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. And how does the Lord know us? You know why he knows us? Because he has given us the law, statutes, and commandments. And it goes back to the, the covenant and the agreement that he made with uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So he's only dealing with us. And that's why we receive the law, statutes, and commandments. And uh, you can go into uh, Exodus, the 24th chapter. It talks about uh, the covenant that we made or the blood contract that we made uh, with the Heavenly Father. And we got law, statutes, and commandments. Uh, under uh, Moses and Aaron, okay? So uh, you can go back and read that history for yourself to get a better understanding. So the temple is talking about the Israelites. Now, let's further prove that. Um, we can get um, uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 3, because um, the temple, yes, it is the people, it is the Israelites, but it really starts with men. Okay, because that, that's who's in charge of the temple. It's men, uh, certain men. So this is uh, Revelation uh, 21, verse uh, 3. And it says, And I heard a great voice out of the heavens saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men. And a tabernacle is just another a word for a temple. Right? It's synonymous for temple. Uh, tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. The Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. That's right, and that's going to ultimately uh, take place in the kingdom of heaven. Yes, it starts now to a certain degree with us going out there on the highways and byways uh, teaching this truth and uh, gathering the elect through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yoshai. But that, this is going to actually play out in the kingdom when we are transformed, when we get immortality. And that comes with us getting uh, uh, different bodies, new bodies, uncorruptible bodies, and the laws written in our inward parts. That's when this is going to take place. But the point is in verse 3, um, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men. So the temple is really dealing with the people, and that starts with the men, okay? All right, so uh, let's just uh, shed some more light on that. We can go into uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Might as well get that one. Um, 3, verse 16 here. And it says here, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Most High, and that the Spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you. So that's right. And that, that goes into the individual as well, um, the elect. So it just shows you that um, the temple is really you, right? And the faith that you have and the connection that you have with Yahweh Shimon Shai. 
So you are the temple. So that proves that the people are the temple. It's not, it's not dealing with uh, a building or a structure. Now, can you build a temple? Yes, because that's what Solomon did. But that really starts with the people. Okay, because it's a people that worships the Lord. And yes, you can have a place of worship, but you have to remember, it doesn't make sense for you to just build a temple, but you don't have the righteous people or the, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the right people that are in the temple worshiping the Most High. Because people in the church, people who are in Christianity or who come out of the church, they'll tell you, no, you need to go to church. You need to worship God in a church. No, you know, the, the Lord, he ain't dealing with the church. Just because you're in the church doesn't mean the Lord is listening to you. Uh, you can find that in, in, the, in the book of Acts, Acts the seventh chapter and uh, the 48th verse. I think that's where it is. See, I'm going off my memory. <laughs> Bear with me. Uh, you know what? Let me start at uh, verse uh, 40, verse 44. And yes, the point will be made in verse 48. So it says here, Acts chapter 7, verse 44, Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he, appointed, as he had appointed speaking unto Moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Yahweh Shai into the possession of the Gentiles, whom the Most High drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. Yeah, because I think you had the high priest uh, Eleazar, which he goes back to the, he's a son of Aaron, which uh, that's where you get um, the word uh, Sadducees from. I believe that goes back to Zadok or Sadak, which Sadak is a son of Eleazar, and Eleazar is a son of uh, Aaron. So that whole priesthood, uh, Sadducees, where that name came about, it really goes back to the priesthood which goes back to the temple, building of the temple and, and things of that nature. So that's history itself. You got to go back and look at that as well. Also, go like I said, um, go into Exodus, the 24th chapter, shows you the history of uh, the covenant that we made with uh, the Heavenly Father through uh, Moses and Aaron and etc. right? Anyways, um, uh, it says here, who found favor before the Most High and desired to find a tabernacle for the Most High or for the power of Jacob. But Solomon built him in house. See, so there was an actual house that was built and Solomon was in charge of that, right? So yes, you can have a place of worship, you can have a temple, but it doesn't make sense to just have the temple, but you don't have the proper people in there worshiping in the temple, okay? Anyways, verse 48, how be it, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. That's right. So he's not dwelling in temples made with hands. And people put more emphasis in the actual building or the structure itself, when that shouldn't be the case. All right? Um, it starts with the people, especially the proper people, because you have something called the synagogue of Satan. Right? They're in the synagogue. They're in the house of the Lord. But they're satanic, man. <laughs> I think that's in Revelation, uh, the second chapter. Revelation 2 and 9, it talks about that. Yeah, right here. Um, this is Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. This is the words of our Lord and Savior, Yahushai. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. And that's twofold. Um, you have the converts, and you have the impostors which are you, you, you Amalekites, you 1948ers. That, that talks about you, but it also talks about actual Israelites who, who are committing blasphemy. You know, they know the name of the Lord. They know that they come out of Abraham, but they're wicked as hell, man. And not all Israel is of Israel. <laughs> so it says, I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So yes, you do have, um, you do have uh, Israelites that are in the temple, but they're not in the right spirit as well. And that's another thing. You have a lot of people who are in the church, who are in this thing, this Israelite thing, but they're not in the right spirit. Just got to throw that out there. So yeah, that proves my point. 
Um, so yes, there is a synagogue of Satan. So that is an actual structure that is built up for the Lord. But you have demonic Israelites that are in the in the temple, and the Lord ain't dealing with them. All right. So anyway, that that proves Acts seven and uh, forty eight. Uh, so you know what? Let me get. Um, uh, did we already get First Corinthians? I think we already read that. Let me, see, let me just go back here. Three and. 16 right 3 and 16 yeah we already read that so you know what now I want to get um, 2nd Timothy's 3 and uh, 16 2nd Timothy's 3 and 16 here and I just want to go into now the read which is the Bible uh, the measuring stick and it has all the laws, statutes, and commandments in it, and it's used for correction. This is just to sh shed more light on that. So it says here, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High, and that inspiration is the breath, which is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that jumps on you to figure things out. So it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High. The Lord has to breathe on you. He has to give you the Spirit, which is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. To go into the scriptures and to figure it out, go into the dark saying, sayings, and uh, the elect and the prophets, the priests, they're going to get that Holy Spirit. They're going to get that portion. They're going to get that breath, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of the Most High may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. There you go. So that's what this uh, Bible is for. It's for correction. Uh, profitable for doctrine because doctrine does come out of the Bible. Um, it's for reproof uh, and for instruction in righteousness. That's right. So this book instructs instructs you how to live a righteous lifestyle, and uh, that's something that um, us as Israelites, especially if we especially if we were in the world, we weren't living righteously. We were we were living uh, very very wickedly, right? But um, yes, this Bible, it instructs you on how to live uh, a righteous lifestyle. You know, uh, and that, that also goes into the dietary law, um, you, you uh, keeping the Shabbat day holy, um, you not murdering your brother, you not murdering people, um, honoring thy mother, honoring thy father, right? That's all, that's all instructions uh, for righteousness. All right, so that's just more proof. Um, so now I want to go back to uh, uh, the spiritual uh, temple, which is uh, 1 Peter's 2 and 5. Okay, for uh, 1 Peter's 2 and 5, because uh, the temple really starts with the people. Just want to go back into that. So anyways, this is uh, 1 Peter's chapter 2, verse 5. It says, actually I'll start at uh, verse 4. As living stones, <laughs> beautiful. And that's right, we're lively stones. And the lively stones, they're building up that spiritual temple. And that the main stone, the chief cornerstone, the foundation of it all is really Yahweh Shai. Uh, he's that stone, he's that special spirit that keeps everything together. Anyways, and that's what makes the temple function, by the way. It's really Yahweh Shai. Uh, so it says here, First Timothy. So first Peter chapter two verse four to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of the most high and precious. That's right. So these stones, man, they're precious. All right, they're special to the most high. Uh, verse five, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the most high by Hamashiach Yahushai. So yes, um, right? So the temple of the Most High is really men and it's the people. And those men and those people are very special unto the Lord and it's a spiritual house. So it's not, it's not about the temple. It's not about the actual uh, infrastructure. It's not about the building. It's about, it's about the people and what spirit they're in. All right. Okay. Hope that makes sense. 
So I just want to go back into the measure ship, me measuring stick, which is the Bible. Uh, let's get uh, Zechariah chapter 2. Zechariah chapter 2. I'm going to start the first verse. Uh, Zechariah chapter 2 verse 1 says the Most High's favor to Zion. <laughs> I lifted up my eyes again and looked and behold a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then said I, Whither goest thou? And he said unto me to measure Jerusalem to see what is the breadth thereof and what is the length thereof. And behold, the angel that talked with me went forth and another angel went out to meet him and said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. So yeah, man, you can only measure the children of Israel with the Bible. Right, so the Bible is our foundation. The measuring rod slash reed is measuring the elect to build the kingdom up. So you have to understand that. Okay, the Bible is measuring the elect, and that's what's going to build the kingdom. And then you can get Amos nine eleven, right? How the Lord uh, is is rebuilding uh, the tabernacle of David, and He's closing up the breaches thereof. The men of old, King David's men, are back here again today, right? And that starts with Great Millstone, I believe, in the spirit, right? I believe it starts with them because they're pushing the truth the right way. But yes, uh, yes, okay? Um, in order for you to measure the nation of Israel, you need to have the scriptures, okay? You need the scriptures. So this is just more proof proof on, about that on that. So anyways, let's get uh, Micah, let's get Micah chapter 6. Actually, let me get Amos. Let me get Amos 9 and 11, since I, I said that. Let's, let's get it. So it says here, Amos chapter 9, verse, I'll start at verse 10. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. <laughs> and that's true. Oh, you know, God hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. Okay, we'll see about that, buddy. The Lord doesn't like sinners, man. So all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. And a lot of a lot of our people are sinning right now. What is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. They're not following the law, statutes, and commandments. They don't care about it, you know. Scripture says my people does not consider. They don't give a damn. But the Lord's going to kill you, man. Amen. If you're sinning willfully, the Lord will kill you. The Lord will kill you, and you're going to get judged. And and there's there's many swords that are out, out here. And that starts with the so-called white man, because that's his blessing. His blessing was the sword. And all the other things that are out here. You got the elements and things of that nature. And our people, man, they're going to die a horrible death in, in these last days, man. So it says, evil shall not overtake nor prevent us uh, the restoration of Israel verse 11 in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof you know also the breaches thereof goes into the animosity between the tribes you got this tribe hitting that tribe the northern kingdom versus the southern kingdom Ephraim versus Judah what does it say Ephraim shall not uh, what is it uh, Judah shall not Vex Ephraim and Ephraim shall not envy Judah. You got that going on. And guess what? The Lord is going to close all that up by building up and raising up the tabernacle of David. You notice this tabernacle, which is the temple. So the temple starts with men, special men. That starts with David and through the rank and file on down. Right, so it's 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 the people that it's talking about. So this is this actually this actually it, it sheds more light onto the to the temple, you know, going into uh, the point of how the temple is really talking about the Israelites. I kind of forgot about this, <clears throat> but that's a spirit, man. It just led me to this uh, precept. So it says here, and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom. You know what it means to possess? Have you in slavery. That's right. So slavery is coming back. To you Edomites, remember you were loosed after a thousand year period, right? 
<laughs> you were loosed, right? And now you're out, but hey, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be uh, possessed in the kingdom, man. We're gonna possess you in the kingdom. That means you're gonna be slaves, you Edomite, you, you Edomites, you so-called white people. And of all the heathen, that's right, all the heathen, the other nations, that's right, they're gonna be slaves. Because you're over us right now, pursuing to Psalms 83rd chapter and other scriptures. But we're going to be over you in the kingdom. And, and, and you're going you're gonna to catch a lot of hell. You're going to pay for all the things that you have done to the Lord's chosen people. Anyways, it says that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith Yahweh, that doeth this. There you go. So, yeah, Amos 9.11, that's what we spoke of. So let me get uh, Micah chapter 6, verse 8 here. And it says, He has showed thee, O man, what is good and what doth Yahweh require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy power. Yahweh's voice crieth unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod. And who hath appointed it? Yeah, man. So you, you have to understand, man. The temple is being built up by the spirit and power of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai at the end of the day. Right? You have, to, you have to understand that. So this temple is being built up spiritually. So it's not by our will. That, you know, by our will and by our might, us deciding who comes into this truth and who doesn't come into this truth. Really, at the end of the day, it's really, decide, that's decided by Yahal Bashim Shai. Okay. Alright, so, um, yeah, I just thought I'd bring this out. Um, with that, just want to uh, give all praises, glory, and honor. We want to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakaha Kodash. The belongs to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone of GMS. To you, I say Shalom. And Shalom unto the hopeful elect. Kwame Asha'Allah and Ababa Ball. Shalom.